Hello there. Let's go ahead and get started on this podcast. All right, I'm going to restart there. Hello there. Today we are talking about exercise. Specifically, I have 14 ways to get yourself to exercise. I am convinced that if I could find the one way to get my patients to exercise, I would win the Nobel Prize. Exercise is so important for our health, yet the majority of Americans are not getting the recommended amount of exercise. And it's really hard to get yourself to move even when you know how important exercise is. So today I am going to share with you the 14 tips I find myself giving my patients the most often. Before we talk about those tips, let's just do a little refresher about why exercise is so important. So exercise is really important to all of us, regardless of our health, because we have decreased all-cause mortality. That is a fancy doctor way of saying you are less likely to die if you exercise from any cause, okay? So exercise makes you live longer. That's great. Um, exercise specifically reduces heart disease. It reduces stroke. It reduces type two diabetes. It reduces certain types of cancer. It reduces obesity. It reduces overweight, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and, uh, it improves your bone health or osteoporosis. It also improves cognition. It decreases your chance of anxiety and depression, and it decreases your chance of Alzheimer's or dementia. So those are all pretty good reasons for all of us to exercise. If you are trying to lose weight or have lost weight and are trying to keep it off, exercise becomes even more important because as we learned in episode four of the podcast, it is essential for weight maintenance. The National Weight Control Registry shows that people who have lost 30 pounds or more and have kept it off for more than a year are exercising more. 90% of them are exercising an hour a day, mostly by walking. So if you have lost weight and are trying to keep it off, or you can picture yourself losing weight and you want to keep it off, exercise is an essential part of weight maintenance. It is not actually that important to losing weight, contrary to what every magazine and probably previous healthcare providers have told you. It's a pretty marginal weight loss that happens from exercise. Most of it comes from nutrition and in some cases, medication or surgery. Exercise adds a little bit to that, but exercise becomes key to maintaining weight. So it is a great thing to do to improve your health. And today we are going to talk about some strategies to get yourself moving more. If you're like my patients, there's lots of reasons that you uh, struggle to get an exercise. You may not have enough time. Your life gets in the way. Maybe you have unexpected events coming up and you just never seem to have time. Maybe exercise is uncomfortable or even painful. Maybe it feels boring to you. Maybe you're not sure what to do or you don't have enough energy to do it. I am going to cover uh, 14 things today that I think will solve at least some of those problems for you. Before we get into those 14 tips, one tip I have for everyone is to make sure you are not using exercise as a punishment or that you are rewarding yourself with food for exercise. That creates a really negative relationship with exercise. What I mean by that, and I'm sure if you don't do this, you know people who do, is you say to yourself, oh, well, I exercise so I can have that cookie, or ooh, I had that cookie, so now I better exercise. This is gonna make you hate exercise, and the math usually does not add up in your favor when you think that way. So I encourage you to separate food from exercise. It is not gonna be helpful to you in your weight loss or health journey. So exercise because it is great for your health, and exercise because hopefully you enjoy it at least a little bit or feel better after you do it. Uh, don't exercise so that you can eat more, and don't exercise because you ate too much. That is not uh, the way to go with movement. Okay. So let's get started with the 14 tips that I have for you, because that's a lot, but we're going to go through them quick. And I hope that some of them will really resonate with you. My first suggestion is to commit to something every day 
but it doesn't matter what it is. This is a strategy that can work for a lot of people because when we have something incorporated into our daily habits, it is a lot more easy to be consistent with it. So for example, um, medication, there is a new medication that I, that I use for some patients. It's an every other day medication. And I think that that's really tough to remember to do something every other day. What did I do it today? Did I do it yesterday? Um, but if it's an everyday medicine, most people can incorporate it into their habit, right? You brush your teeth in the morning, you take your medicine, you have your breakfast, right? So committing to moving every day, but it doesn't matter what it is. So that may mean two days a week, you go to the gym and you really do a tough workout. Out, and maybe you even have a personal trainer or something. And then two days a week you walk and then two days a week you do yoga and one day a week you, you know, just do meditation for five minutes and you, you know, kind of put that in that category. So that can be a way of just being like every day I do something and being consistent and you can just build on that. So that's a strategy that can work for some people, um, and can help improve the consistency. And then you can build on what you're doing from there. Kind of building on that tip number two, I learned this from some of my mentors years and years ago is to start with just putting your shoes on, putting your exercise clothes on. If starting to exercise feels really overwhelming, maybe you haven't done it in a long time. Maybe you feel like you're sore every time you do it. Maybe you don't even know what to do. Start by saying, I'm going to go on a walk and I'm just going to put my shoes on today and we'll see if I make it out the door. And once those shoes are on, once the comfortable clothes are on, maybe it'll be a little easier to just do that activity. So sometimes it's just starting with getting dressed for the activity. And if you can make it that far, see what you can do next. So that's a super easy step, right? If you have not exercised in a long time, maybe just put on the shoes. Okay. Next, again, a kind of a simple step, but super, super effective and probably essential to a lot of my patients is putting your exercise, putting your movement on your calendar. If you are the sort of person who lives by a schedule, you know, you have your work meetings of the day, maybe you have commitments with your children um, at the end of the day, you might have like a busy, busy day. Maybe you have meetings at night, maybe you have side gigs and your schedule is booked. You look at your calendar look at your schedule for the week, look at your schedule for the day and figure out where you're going to pencil in that five minutes or 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour. Maybe you need to plan that in advance, right? Maybe you need to start building some of the other activities around your exercise. Nope. I have a four o'clock appointment with myself to exercise and it doesn't matter what comes up. It's on my schedule. So if you live and die by your schedule, put exercise on your calendar, make it a commitment, like a meeting, make it a commitment, like a doctor's appointment and see if that helps you be consistent with your exercise. All right. Tip number four. This is uh, one of my favorites. It is to join an in-person class. This is a great way to have some external motivation and it takes a lot of the brain work out of figuring out what you're going to do. A lot of people make it to the gym and then maybe don't get that intense of a workout or that balanced of a workout in because they're just kind of going from equipment to equipment. They don't really know. Maybe it wasn't that fun to them. If you find a class you like, it can be a lot of fun. You can start to know the people in the class. Maybe they kind of bug you if you don't show up. So you have some accountability and often you're going to get a more effective workout from a class. So a lot of rec centers have classes. A lot of the big chain gyms have classes. There are all sorts of different chains throughout the country that offer classes. I personally am a big fan of CrossFit. Um, if you think CrossFit is not for you, CrossFit has changed a lot. CrossFit is for everyone. The gym I go to, we have people of all ages, all sizes, all different fitness abilities, different injuries, and CrossFit can work for anyone. Um, but maybe you like bar classes. Maybe you like Zumba. You like to dance. Maybe you're just going to go back to dancing. If you used to dance, take an adult dance class. So join an in-person class. Sometimes those are a lot more fun. Sometimes they're a lot more effective workouts. And then you get that group accountability. On the same line of thought, getting accountability from other people, get a partner to work with. So tip number five is to get a partner. I have a lot of patients who have found a walking buddy. 
So this may be a family member they live with or live nearby. This may be a neighbor. Um, this may be a coworker. A lot of my patients have decided that lunch is the only time they can find on their calendar. And so they find someone at work who also is working on getting healthy. And maybe they do a quick 15 minute or 30 minute or even 45 minute walk every day for their lunch break. And that can be such a nice way to relax, break up your workday and have a consistent pattern. The only challenge with a partner is if they decide to stop doing the exercise, you are going to need a backup plan. So don't be so dependent on that person that, you know, you do not have a plan to exercise without them, but that can be such a great way to get started and have a get accountability and have fun while you're moving is to have an exercise buddy. It doesn't have to be walking either. You could do a workout class together. You could do something virtually. You could just do something at the same time. It could be, you know, a sibling or friend who lives across the country and you guys are going to do the same program at the same time, but you're going to go ahead and do it virtually together. But finding a buddy that can really help with accountability for a lot of people. Um, another thing would be to start some sort of program. So probably my first time like really formally exercising and doing a program I was in medical school and P90X was the rage then. So I tried P90X and I probably had some of the best results I've ever had from an exercise program from that because it was laid out. It was consistent. It was a program. I think that program was six or seven days a week and it, it was a system, right? So there are so many nowadays, some of them are free, but there's Beachbody. That's where P90X is. And they have tons of different versions of that. Lots of different programs. Nike has programs, Apple Fitness does, Peloton Digital, um, but there are people on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok that you can follow and they lay out programs for you. And if you are you know, ready to exercise on a regular basis, a specific program can be a great way to go ahead and get started uh, because it's going to lay it out for you and you're going to see tremendous progress when you stick with the specific system. So if you're ready to really kick it up, find a program that sounds like fun to you, maybe Maybe that you've heard good things about, you want to level up more, maybe add that buddy to your program, um, but start, start a system. And that can be a great way to kind of lock yourself into a program for a few weeks or months. All right. Number seven, buy a Peloton. This is a very specific one, but the Peloton has transformed a lot of people's experience with exercise. Uh, my husband got me one when I was pregnant, when I was not not working out very much. And it takes a lot of excuses out of the game to have a Peloton or other piece of exercise equipment in your home because it's, it's right there, right? Like you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to sign up for anything. All you have to do, especially with the bike is like sit on it and start moving your legs and they'll tell you what to do. So, uh, I think that home exercise equipment can be a great fit, but these interactive ones that have come out, things like tonal, um, Peloton, mirror. Those can be really fun. If you like gadgets, if you are competitive, if you like laid out programs, having that equipment in your home, uh, can be a great investment. And, uh, I do have a Peloton referral code in, in the show notes. So if you've been thinking about Peloton, I highly recommend all their stuff. Um, I think it's been great. And I have a lot of patients who totally love the Peloton. Um, I am mama star with two R's on there. If you want to follow me. So that might be a fun thing that you, you decide you like doing. Okay. Number eight, pick a race and sign up for it. So a race like a 5k, they have programs online called couch to 5k. And these are programs that start you off with walking. Again, they give you a very specific schedule. And then you have this end date of a really fun event where you get to challenge yourself. Maybe you get a medal at the end and have some bragging rights. So a 5K is 3.1 miles for those of you who have not done any sort of race before. Um, so a lot of people could could definitely walk that distance, walk, jog that distance, or maybe with training, you can end up running or jogging the whole thing. So that can be a fun challenge. And again, there are these awesome couch to 5K programs where you can go from someone who is not exercising at all to finishing a 5K, which is a little more than a three mile race. All right, number nine, for those of you who feel like exercise is just boring, like the thought of running three miles sounds just like the most boring thing ever, 
do something else while you're moving. So there's no rule that you have to be focused solely on exercise while you are exercising. So if you have that piece of home exercise equipment, an elliptical, a bike, a treadmill, or you have a membership to a a gym or a fitness center or rec center, get on that piece of cardio equipment, move your legs, and then pop on your favorite podcast, your favorite TV show, your favorite movie, um, a book on tape, and just like enjoy that while you're moving. The exercise still counts if you're watching a movie. And so that can be a really fun way to reward yourself. That can be a way to be efficient if you feel like I just don't have time to do all the things I want to do. I don't want to give up my leisure time. We'll move a little bit while you're you're doing that leisure time. Um, And again, that takes the boring factor out of it a little bit. And you'll be amazed how fast 10, 20, 30 minutes can go by when you are watching a show or listening to a podcast or audiobook that you enjoy. Uh, all right. Number 10, get a dog. Okay. I know this is not going to apply to most people, but having a dog is a great way to make yourself go on a walk on a regular basis. Your dog will remind you that it needs that walk. I've had patients who they start taking their walk, their dog on a walk every day after dinner. And, uh, you know, if, if they don't do it one day, that dog is sort of in their face, like, you know, Hey, let's go, let's go. I know it's time. So having the dog is a great way to get yourself moving. Uh, and maybe you already have a dog and the dog is not used to going on walks. It will get used to it pretty quickly. It will fall in love with going on walks. Dogs love to go out and explore and smell. And so if you already have a dog or dogs, this is a great time to, you know, start walking with them a little bit more. uh, And maybe that is going to be your consistent form of exercise. All right. Number 11, restart a hobby. So as a lot of us get older and get more commitments and through the COVID pandemic, a lot of us have stopped doing things we liked. Maybe that was riding a bike. Maybe that was hiking, um, all sorts of things that maybe we stopped doing. Maybe you used to dance, maybe you used to play soccer. So go ahead and like look into those opportunities in your area. Maybe you can join a bowling league. Maybe you can join a dance class again. So if there's something you loved when you were 15 or 25, like you could do that again. So look into some of those other hobbies that got you moving before. And that can be a fun social way to do some exercise in your life. All right. Number 12, get a personal trainer. When my patients are really glowing about exercise, when they're going on and on and on about something they love, um, it's often their personal trainer. Personal trainers will often kick your butt. You will get a really good workout in that is going to be customized for you. And there's a huge accountability factor. And most of them will give you training things that you can do on your other days that are going to be customized for you. So, you know, you may work out with them one or two days a week, but they're going to give you some tips on what to do those other days. So a personal trainer may be the solution for you. All right. Tip number 13, getting a fitness tracker. So there are tons of options for these nowadays. Some of them can be pretty fun. Some of them may already be on devices that you have. So, you know, when I was training, the old school device was a pedometer. Those are still available. So if you're not a tech person, those are like 10, maybe 15 bucks. You can get them on Amazon at, you know, Target, Walmart, whatever. And that's just a little plastic thing you clip on your waistband and it'll track how much you're moving. And you can just increase the amount of steps you're doing. But most of us nowadays, we have our Apple watches. You can get a Fitbit. You can get a Garmin watch. You can get fancy things like Whoop. There's all sorts of different devices where you can track your movement, track your heart rate. And those can be a lot of fun and really motivating. And those can just be an easy way to start moving more. So that may be for people who are like, well, I feel like I'm on my feet a lot and I'm with my kids. That's that reality check. How much are you moving? And then you can add to it. So if you're wearing your tracker, you find out you're doing about 5,000 steps a day. Okay, next week we're going to try for 5,500 every day. And then the next week we're going to try for 6,000. And keep increasing your steps to get to 10,000 or 12,000 steps a day. So getting a fitness tracker can be a really fun way to track your steps. But they also will track all the other exercise you're doing. If you have an Apple Watch, there's um, the closing your ring for 30 minutes every day. So that can be a fun um, challenge for yourself. So, um, you know, use those fitness trackers. Those can be a great way to get yourself to start moving. All right. Tip number 14. I couldn't end on 13, right? That would be unlucky is to get outside. So I am recording this in the middle of winter, a little less appealing, but you will still have those sunshiny moments. For some of us, there are fun things you can do outside. You can go sledding, you can go skiing, you can go snowshoeing. Maybe you live someplace that's wonderful all year round. 
Go on a walk, go on a bike ride, play basketball, swim, play tennis, rollerblade. There are all these outdoor activities. Maybe you used to do them. Maybe you've never tried them. Maybe it's been a long time, but get outside, have fun, Um, do things with your family, do things with your friends. And that is going to be a lot more motivating to keep going. All right, 14, that sounded like it was going to take a while, but we whipped right through those. So hopefully there were some things on there that resonated with you. Hopefully you're motivated to start something. Find activities that you enjoy. Remember, exercise is not a punishment. Exercise is important for everyone's health, regardless of their weight. Exercise is something that is going to be even more important if you have lost weight and are trying to keep it off because it is the biggest predictor of maintaining your weight. So find find a thing you want to do and get moving. Exercise is key to health. It's key to weight. And uh, let me know which of these tips you enjoyed most. Can't wait to talk to you all next week.